I am Professor Shashan, Principal of Midas. Welcome to Architecture and Midas. Architecture is a creative field that combines imagination and practical knowledge. Architecture is also a field that deals with designing of shelters, one of the three basic necessities of human beings apart from food and clothing. For any architectural education institute, three things are essential. First one is the infrastructure, second one is the mentors and the faculty and the third one is the environment in which this teaching learning process takes place. Prior to coming here as the Dean of Midas, I had been to many other places in the capacity of teaching as well as in the capacity of uh, professional practice. I am a person who truly believe in nurturing the education Buddha. So my message to the students and parents and the faculty of Midas is that everybody is bestowed and gifted with their own unique talents. Somebody has to nurture it. Somebody has to help you identify your strengths and then work on it to become successful and grateful. So Midas is a place where you can come, get identified. You can find out who you are, what you are. And this is the place which is bestowed with such faculties and the facilities which helps and nurtures the students to come, find out, identify and conquer the world.
start now, so. Yeah, another two minutes, I think it should be. Okay, yeah. Yes, sir. Awesome to mute, madam. I request the participant to kindly mute your mic, please. Start, sir. Yeah. Yeah, madam. Good afternoon, everyone. Mark Institute of Design and Architecture, Swanabhumi, takes the great privilege to welcome you all for the Midas webinar series 12 focusing on concept to completion, making of Mahatma Gandhi International Conference Center at Niyavi Niger, Africa by architect Pooja Gau. She is a senior design manager in Shapuji Palanji Middle East, LLC, Dubai. Now I request our beloved principal, Vidas Professor Shashan Chakrat you to deliver the welcome address. Thank you. Over to principal, sir. Yeah, thank you, Emilata. Good afternoon, students. Good afternoon, faculty. Uh, good afternoon, all the guests present here for the webinar. And good afternoon to the chief guest uh, and the speaker of this program, Architect Pooja. Uh, today we have uh, a different kind of webinar. As you know, last year, uh, India celebrated the 150th birth anniversary of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. And to honor that, uh, Indian government proposed a uh, conference center at Nigeria as a friendship gesture and that conference center was completed in a record time and that's how uh, we have the case study uh, called sort of case study of that conference center where architect Pooja is going to uh, enlighten us about uh, that building of the conference center right from the concept stage to the completion stage. I am sure it is going to be an interesting session as we come to know about the buildings that are being built, built in the foreign, on the foreign soil by the Indian government in the context of the African uh, nation. So I welcome architect Pooja uh, for the session. I request uh, the moderator to briefly introduce our speaker today. Thank you. everybody uh, can you can you just let me know if I'm uh, visible and audible is that a yes 
Pooja, one second. Uh, we'll have an introduction of yours and then we can start it. Oh, okay, no problem. Can I go? Yes. Architect Pooja Gout, currently working as Senior Design Mar Manager in Sarokji Palonji Middle East LLC Dubai, completed her Bachelor's in Architecture in GNTU Hyderabad and she per further pursued her Master's in Project Management in University of Salford, Manchester, located in United Kingdom. She has a total of 14 years of experience in the field of architecture. Her key skills are managing and leading design. She is well versed in hotel design, hospital, commercial, residential and mixed use buildings. She is an expertise in value engineering of design and interior materials of hotel, hospital suits, commercial buildings and mixed use development. Welcome ma'am. Just open the PPT alone. Yeah. Am PPT, I you're not open. Oh, ah, I did. PPT, you're not open. I did. Just have a look at it. Now open the PPT. You minimize, I think. Just share your desktop alone. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Just minimize the small window in the down. Yeah. Fine. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mr. Shashank, Professor Shashank, and uh, for for introduction, and uh, and an opportunity uh, you have given me. Thank you, Manju, ma'am, uh, and. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Shashank, again, and Ms. Manju, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. Yes, uh, as the brief just said, I have about 14 to 15 years of industry experience. Um, I'm a student of architecture of Ms. Manju from CSIIT School of Architecture. And from there on, I have pursued my master's in, in uh, project management and construction in Manchester, UK. And there on, there on, I had worked in diversified projects, uh, ranging from residential, commercial, hospitality has been my speciality so far. And then, of course, we have um, uh, managed on on uh, different project scales. So my experience, I could take it by far, has been uh, Shapurji has given me a wide range of experience as an organization. I've been associated with this company since about six years in Dubai, and before this, I was working in India with them. Now, having worked here uh, in, in Shapuri Padalji International, I got this very, uh, I would say, not everybody would get an opportunity like this of delivering a project of this scale that I'm going to introduce you in, in, in the subsequent slides. Um, and that has, as Mr. Shashank just mentioned, that it is on the birth anniversary of uh, uh, Gandhiji. Uh, Indian government, Narendra Modi and government, um, uh, wanted to present to Africa as as a as a as a friendship gesture with different level of partnership and and they have constructed uh, this convention center in memory of of Mahatma Gandhi so again welcome that that the the right hand side image that you can see at the minute is the finished um, image of of the of the project now, since I would want to stick again to the title of this particular webinar today, from concept to completion, and and please um, note that there is a lot to this project. Uh, this is a magnanimous project that we have delivered, and again, I would focus more on the concept part uh, since it is of the academic interest, and uh, from there, and any questions, I think we'll break a couple of times in in there about um, in in 30 40 minute session that we have now. I will we'll break a couple of times to for some questions and then if you have any any questions there I'll be happy to clarify that now let's let's move into the slides Mahatma Gandhi International Conference Center or a convention center that you would call um, as we have been uh, given this opportunity from Shapurji Palanji to to design and execute this project which is in uh, Niamey Niger Africa and I would like to just spend a few seconds on this slide again. 
This project has been constructed by Srapurji Palanji and project design is a proprietary of uh, Stoop Consultants India. So they have designed this project for us and we have designed and built. So basically, this is a proprietary material used, uh, used exclusively for academic purpose in this, in this particular presentation. Right. So as we move ahead, I will just try to take you to a narration of where this project is. Not everybody would know um, this, this con uh, Niame or Niger as, as a place. So um, Niame is, is a, a, a country there and Niger is a place. So it's in the western side of Africa. And this is where the project has been executed and handed over. So that's where uh, you would see in the geographical content where, where that sits. Now, this one uh, is, is briefly a kind of, you would say, the capacities that we are, uh, we are talking about. And this had to be a convention center of a world-class convention center was the requirement by the government. And these were, and you see the content on the right side, they wanted a presidential hall. Uh, presidential Hall is, is the most VIP um, uh, building. Where, that's where the presidents of all the 50, 50 odd um, countries of the African continent would converge for a conference and, and a convention setup. So that's that's very key building for us. And then we had a VIP lounge, of course, that has to be, they are presidents, of course, the highest cater of, of our country. They are coming to this building. And there's a media media room and press briefing because, of course, when there are huge leaderships involved, there would be media attention and a press briefing attention that's required. So we had to have also these um, areas in the design. And then the administration. And then we had plenary hall. Plenary hall, uh, you would say, uh, to simplify, that would be a auditorium setup, and that had to accommodate about 2,000 odd people for any kind of a convention. So what happens is uh, when there is a meeting or a gathering in the presidential hall, and then followed by any other events, so this particular plenary hall should accommodate about 2,000 people at given point in time. And also there was a banquet hall requirement, just in case you want to break out for a quick lunch, for VIPs or snacks and tea or coffee or a high tea um, uh, session of that sort. So that was the generic requirement of this project. And I would take you further down into where the site was. This is, this is the, the, the one highlighted in red here. That's we are looking at the project site for the, for the, con for the conference center. And then uh, in, in this setup, in this setup, you would see this is the site again, and you would see there were there were earlier uh, buildings already there, the old buildings which we had to demolish at some at some point in time. Now uh, on the left, so this is again, I'm slowly getting into how uh, how a site study was done. So this you can say this slide is the beginning of the site study when you would even before uh, the concept study that will be done. So this is what's what at this point in time at site, even, even before the design was taken on board. These were the site photographs. Now, this is point source one and point source two. Of course, you can see where the, where the camera angle has been focused on. So the photo one is in, in the north direction, this one, and this one is in the uh, looking towards the left. So this was as is uh, site analysis photographs before the design has started. Right. So again, a few more photographs here. What's existing elements at site? Then you need to study that. So this will this will of course, in the in the academic interest, uh, of course, people with experience would know that you would you would want to, based on the regulations or the design um, narrative, you want to incorporate the local elements or you want to demolish. So that this is the uh, decision phase. That's why you need to have a proper st uh, site study. Now, again, this is more in the context of, um, again, this is more in the context of site and the surroundings, more photographs. Now, this one is the contour maps, so of the actual site. 
So that's that will define you. What is the contours uh, even before the concept? This is like what are the contours at site? What the site is offering you, and and then what is the maximum and the minimum level at site? <laughs> maximum and. Um, sorry, sorry for interruption. I can hear a disturbance. Someone's mic is unmuted. Very great, great. Right. Thank you very much. So that's the uh, that's the site contour map which will give us a thorough study of how this would be. And later to this will be drawn the site sections. There you go. So these are site sections as per the contour survey in the earlier slide that we have that we have seen. Now this now in this kind of a site or, or, or a land that this particular site had to offer us, this is where we had to mate sit about like big three blocks, which is plenary or an auditorium block, presidential block, and the banquet hall. Now that gives a uh, the, the side dynam dynamics as to where do you accommodate what. Now slowly, if you see, it's getting into from the steady mode to where to fix what. You know, so that's that's the transition of the site steady, the photograph, then the contour maps, then the sections, and then so this. So now, now we know what the site is, where is it located, what's the maximum and the minimum levels at site, and that's where we stop. Now, once the site had to offer that, the next is what is the regional research, right? So again, as this is a collaboration between Indian and Niger government, you really have to uh, you really have to study the geography. The, the sentiments, the emotion quotient of the, the country that we are designing it for, right? So that's the flag of Niger. And it talks like the Indian flag or, or the flag of any country. The flag talks about what different colors are, right? So for example, the orange that, that's uh, used in their flag represents Sahara Desert, which is uh, one of the biggest desert that we know of. And the site or, or the place that we are building this particular project is not very far from Sahara Desert. And the green, of course, is, is about the green plains. There's a lot of plains also. It's kind of a mixed geography that we are talking about. So Sahara is not very far. The rivers are, are the river is passing through Niger. And then white stands for hope, right? And then, so that's the that's a few seconds on the flag. And right is the coat of arms. That's very dear. That's that's one symbol, like Indian emblem that we use on our passports. The similar thing. This is this is quite significant when we talk about Niger. So <clears throat> that's that's called coat of arms. Now, it it has its own meaning. It has the you know. Um, they have. They talk about different tribes. They talk about their own significance. So that's the coat of arms there. Now, very interesting part is your research. Now, um, these are all the. Um, this is particular is the desktop study. I mean, we haven't liked the photographs. We clicked standing at the site, right? So this is this is something you can call as a desktop study where your Google research and the research documents. And, and the architects were able to put in together the, the design narrative. Now, again, like India, African as a, Africa as a continent, uh, they are very touchy about their culture. They are very touchy about colors. They love colors. And they are very, very touchy about their, their tribes, where they come from, like in India. I'm just trying to draw parallels from Africa and India because, because um, it's quite similar, you would say. Uh, like like we we have surnames, uh, family names in India. They have tribes, yeah. So they come from different tribes, and that's very very significant. So we were trying to, I mean, Stoop was trying to get all these um, narratives together. Now this is the Sahara region. That's one of the coat of arms or the flag that talks about. So that's closest to to the region that we are designing. And these are the elements. So you see the vernacular components you are able to see as to what this is. And the river Niger, right? So that flows in Niger. 
So that's the that's the shape. That's the way it flows. And so that's the basically that's the characteristic property of their which the flow. I mean, I'm then trying to impress upon the Sahara here, the shape of the river here, because in the subsequent slides there is a connectivity to these to the to the to the design development, right? So again, this is again a, um, a, a and what is the wildlife? You know, the gazelle, the Dama gazelle, very famous there, and very significant baobab tree. Again, um, I'm just spending a few more seconds on this slide to explain about this tree, baobab tree, because this is one of the component. Again, you would see one from this slide is the river. Second from the side is the baobab tree, which is which is very significant. It is a which it is a native of Madagascar, basically this particular tree, but. Uh, They've used this in the design also. So as we move forward, how did they transform this particular tree into an architectural element is what you would see. So we are slowly developing from the site study to the desktop study, the Google research, and then images. So we are we are noting all this as we as we move along in the design process. Very significant, um, very significant pattern. Have a very closer look at this. This is this is the salt business. This is the salt industry. So the brine solution, right? So there is um, Atlantic or, or in, in, in the nearby regions. So usually it's seen in near the seas and the oceans, but this is uh, the salt industry, the salt pan. This is what it is called. So when there is a brine solution or a salt water in all of these patches that you see and with the aging, different times of aging, it, it reflects different colors. So this is very popular. The lady is walking. You can see it's like potholes, just like that, and with different um, colors and gradients, hues and tints of brown. You can see, and reds uh, predominantly. So that's that's quite interesting pattern as well. Now, very significant again. Uh, Niger is known for uranium mines. So that's the landscape of how a uranium mine would look like. Again, have a closer look at this. This is, this is a mosque there in Niger, which is a very famous structure. So again, uh, I hope you uh, all of you are focusing on how the stable desktop study research is moving on. So if you, if you have these slides in mind, then you will, you will see how this has trans, uh, translated into concept design and then subsequent to the, the actual design of the building. And and have a closer look at how how the you see these symbols on the uh, Hausa pattern. Now this is one of the tribe there called Hausa. There are about five tribes. Uh, we'll we'll have a look at them in the subsequent slides. But this is the the pattern of of that particular. Every tribe has their own symbol. So this is the symbol of Hausa. There you go. So there are about uh, five uh, five distinct, very distinct. There are more as well, but these are the very distinct five tribes called Hausa, Zarma, Thorag, Fulani, and Kanuri. So these are about five different tribes of uh, of Niger. And and as I've, the way I've started, they would want to, it is always nice to incorporate uh, the local context into, into, into our, our project. There you go again. This is quite significant how uh, ethnic flag. The symbol represents the eternal knot in their culture. So this is very, very uh, cultural uh, dominant symbol. And these are the kind of accessories. Um, these are the, um, tribe, the pattern in terms of fabrics, if you want to say. That's the fabrics, that's the accessories. This is the you know, the shoes and the bracelets and the jewelry that they wear, just focus on this man. He's very colorful with many textures and pat patterns happening on him in day-to-day -day life. That's that's what their attire is like. Again, the musical instruments, the local. Now, again, the way this lady is carrying something on her head, you see this? Now, these are, again, I would like to go back. This is an ex Extensive research done on the local uh, and the local tribes and the content because um, they get overwhelmed 
when you design to their particular language. It's it's anything like how we as Indians uh, would get overwhelmed when our our regional signs or our country is represented uh, represented on any um, building. So that's the that's the fabric that they would the use for their clothing. Again, these are these are different. If you see this, these are about different signs. Have a look at very close look at this particular extreme right pattern. This is again a thorax symbol which is used here. And again, a bag. These are symbols, tribal symbols here and there. These are again amulet or accessories that you would say. Again, closely focus as what this lady is carrying on on her on her head here right so later later in the subsequent slides again there is a narrative of this and how we have derived to the to the form of a building taking the local inferences again this is their local embroidery work the detailing so this is to get um, this is again how we have picked and chosen, um, you know, the details from this in, and translated into the building. So these are worth exploring again. A very well uh, thorough uh, regional research was done for this project. There you go. Now, again, as the um, it as the uh, uh, conceptual requirement of the project, spatial requirement for the for the project was a plenary hall that I said here, which is a which is an auditorium. And this is this circle when the round building or in plan, the element that you see here is the presidential block. And this is a banquet block that I've just said. And here ties the friendship tag of Indian flag, orange and green and white. Again, these were the concepts. A few things have carried forward into the design, into the detailed design and to the execution. But at this point in time, we have we have done a site photographs and the re, and the presence there. We have done the contours of the site, and then we have done a desktop study of what the local culture is like, what do they wear and what do they use, the accessories, etc. And and this is how we have uh, they have got to got to the uh, zoning of the building and and actually more. And then. And then these are the car parks, surface car parks. So somewhere we, we tried to tag in these colors of Indian flag. And this in plan is the statue of Mahatma Gandhi, which we, since this project is called Mahatma Gandhi, uh, based on his name. So we have used his um, statue there. Now, these are these are concepts again, very um, concepts which have changed. I'll take you the changes now. This is how the design builds up. For, for projects like this in the region that we do not know. So Africa as a region and we as Indians, we had to go through a lot of um, a study like that to arrive to these. And then later, again, in the in the continuation slides, we, we talk about each of these buildings and, and how have we arrived to that. So again, this element here is called Freedom Tower. We'll, we'll take you uh, more into how, how this has come here different views again of the building. This is the colonnade at the entry connecting three buildings. Just a few more shots. And these were like the interior views, very initial interior views. Again, we tried to use the coat of arms there. This were ceilings. Again, very, very rudimental. We wanted, they wanted to use the arrows like that of from the accessories that you have seen. Then this is the sun. And, and the pattern that we want, they, they initially proposed was, you know, a very tribal fabric pattern on the ceilings as well. Again, these are all conceptual. Yeah. Conceptual. Look at, look, 
I mean, this is fantastic way of um, getting your your research, your desktop research or your physical research into the design. Look at the ceiling pattern. It, it talks about the symbols of, of different tribes. Look at the uh, wall finishes. This is the fabric that they wear. You know, that's how it uh, that's how the intent of translating the external um, uh, mood to the internal mood here. Again, these were very, very rudimental sketches or, or images. The material palette. Now, slowly from the external, we are getting into the internal part of it because that the, the obviously external it talks, but when you are inside the building, once the building is is constructed, then it needs to talk. I mean, there are so many hotels, or or I mean, sorry, I, I'm giving you example of hotels because. Uh, uh, that's been my expertise. And the reason why, uh, even while we design a building, you know, a hospital could be anywhere because it's it's completely uh, driven by getting the patient healthy and, and out. But when you talk about hospitality, when you talk about congregation places, people fly from, from geographical position A to position B, and they could be flying from any part of the world to, to a specific part of the world. And, and you should make them feel that they are not in their home country, they are in some other country. And that, should, that language should be taken across. So again, these are internal, and that can only be done when you translate all these research elements into your interior design. So that's how the interior palette started to build from, from the research. Again, quickly, I'm moving through that. This is the presidential sketches where the presidents of 50 odd African African countries would, would sit here for, for a conference. So that's a very, very high profile uh, building that we are talking about. Very important. Now that's where the real translation of, of, um, of study gets it into why, why why it takes a shape like that? It is because the inference was, look at the shape of the river, that's the way it's turning in measure is that way. And to see in the extreme right of, of the slide. So that's, and therefore, therefore the translation of that, the translation of, sorry, I can hear myself. There's a resound. IT, please. Yeah, so the, the shape of the shape of the river has been translated like that, and therefore the uh, arrangement of the building has taken this this shape. And not very far from this, I think uh, uh, one or two kilometers from from the site where where uh, this project happened, is this particular river. River. So two kilometers is nothing. So therefore, that shape in terms of organizing or the aligning of buildings has happened. And you see this colonnade that we colosseum that we have spoken about. You see this fluid nature of this. So, so it, so the intent was the design, the external design should be in terms of how the river is flowing in a fluid way. So, if that makes any sense, so that's that's exactly what. Uh, designers wanted to translate here. Well, so that's me and the architect uh, Diana of this project. She's the lead architect. And you, you, would, you would see what the lady is carrying here, right, on her head. Now, the most um, high profile building, the presidential hall, towards the left that you see, the design inspiration, the concept has been derived from that, what she's carrying on her head. Now that's called, in, in their language, it's called kalabash. Now kalabash, it's basically a fruit. Um, you, could, you, could, you could relate that to a shell of a coconut, basically, when, when you, when you uh, consume what that fruit has to offer from inside, then you're left with the shell of that particular fruit. So that's that's the um, correlation I can draw to an Indian uh, well-known coconut. So that's exactly what it is, but a larger size, but it's quite fragile. It's not as 
as hard as coconut, but it's like a pumpkin, a very big pumpkin with with a very um, with a with a harder carcass than than it is like. And then once it is dried, these ladies use this for fishing. It's like a basket on their head. So when they go out, they have this on their head. Like we we have the vegetable uh, vegetable, uh, you know, those baskets on the head. It, it's similar to that. So that is the inspiration of this building, right? So you could see how big that is. So when you go to the local markets, you see in my hand, that's how big that would be here. So that's Kalabash. And that's the concept uh, they have uh, used for, for the designing of this very, very uh, important building here. And once the shape of the building is decided, we come on the facade. Facades talk. They, they literally talk to people who are seeing that, right? So, so when you see here, we have, when we were talking about the research, we, we have seen the local, um, the salt pan pattern that I've described earlier, yeah, which is a very, very common site in the salt industry. So you can see the design references. You would see that we have spoken about this a while ago. So that's that. And that has been transformed on the facade of this building in terms of concept. So we have Kalabash, the fruit, which lady or, or something like that, clubbed or merged with the salt pan, the salt industry, which is very famous there. So that's the concept there. Very interesting and we have seen it transforming from what we have perceived it here, right? And again, um, coat of arms, why the roof is like that in that shape is we have picked it up from here, from the coat of arms symbol that we have uh, I've narrated earlier. It's quite significant symbol and that's the sun pattern you would say. So let's for the uh, sake of a very simple vocabulary, let's talk it as a sun pattern. So the sun pattern has been derived from, from there. Huh. So this, a mosque, a very famous mosque. We just spoke about it. Uh, I spent a few seconds explaining about the significance of this mosque. And there you go. That's the Freedom Tower for our, for, for our building. And we have used this architecture here to translate the local vernacular, a very significant mosque in the region we try and translate it, the same uh, architectural components or the language and the color and the texture from that. There you go. We have spoken about, I've spent again, going back, I've spent two minutes talking about Baobab tree, quite significant of Madagascar and that part of Africa. That's the structure of that tree, huge trunk and bare branches. And not literal translation, but you would see in this, if you can see this particular colosseum here, the architectural elements were, trans were a reference of this particular uh, tree, which is very significant in their culture. So that was used as the surround of the building here. All these white elements that you see here, they mean a baobab tree like that in the concept. So there you go. This is, I mean, of course, you wouldn't do it like that. It is, this is, this is just vegetation, but you have to literally transform that here in a region, Africa, then you have to, you have to think about the transportation, logistics, etc. So that's a significant um, uh, representative, architectural representative, uh, representation of baobab tree. Then again, we went on these um, tribal patterns here. So if you could see that here, there is a mashrabia or a jali connecting between uh, two baobab trees. So the architectural element for, again, these don't have any structural symbol, um, a structural uh, significance. These are purely for, for the uh, translating the language of local language into the design. Now this mashrabia, I'll take you to the later details in the subsequent slide. It has the tribal symbols in this. 
so that people can relate to to this building you know so that those are the details uh, tiny little details that that was that were picked up in the architectural elements these again the hausa pattern that uh, we have just spoken so these are the patterns that have been used and this is the mosque architectural elements that we have taken these is this is the entry uh, highlighted in red here this is the entry there are several such uh, entrances but just to uh, give an example the hausa pattern um, design symbol has been used in the entrances like that so that the the connection of of african people to the convention center becomes much more deeper there you go that's what i've explained now look at me here on the right these are the ladies the local ladies of niger and the kind of colors they wear and you see so them in their everyday attire they wear about colors and textures very beautiful colors and textures uh, are their attire so we wanted to use that also into that so that's where we have used these fabrics and colors from their dresses or the fabrics that they usually use there so again the landscape design initially that i've spoken uh, we wanted to use the three colors of both niger and indian flag which is orange and 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 uh, green and white again these are the inferences these are the plans which we have already spoken about but a quick master plan has been developed now while we are talking i've taken to the narrative of how that has been determined now once the um, now we have moved from the concept to the interiors to the patterns that we we have to select from where have we selected what were our references and now it comes to the concept is finished now we get in slowly into the details and the functionality of 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 the design now that's the plenary block um, a seating capacity of 200 um, sorry to about 2000 people so those were getting more into detail i would not go into each and every detail unless and until um, you guys want me to get back to it when in in our q and a sessions so i'll just quickly browse through them again uh, different area usage uh, diagrams in terms of presidential where the media block would be where the administration block would be this is the banquet so you enter the you enter this is the main gate you either go there and if there are any functions only to the plenary area so you drive down here you get down here and you take an exit from there so it has been designed if if there is presidents don't meet every day they don't meet every month so that's that presidential block is is uh, constructed a design for those vip meetings but even otherwise the local city people should be able to use this conference center for any other purpose you know if they want to have any local cultural programs etc they should be able to use this as a standalone building so this these things have been designed with with such a standalone um usage in mind and then we had the banquet here which again a standalone way also you can use that which caters to about 500 people for for a small party or something so you can do that as well although they look as connected buildings they they function as holistically they function very beautifully and then and they can also be used because every building has their own toilets their own uh, seating areas their own lifts their own staircases so the interdependency um, they are connected but they also can be used as a standalone buildings again these are floor plans floor plans again these are floor plans so if you guys want to go back in detail then we can we can always come back to these slides now these are the sections uh, that i would talk about um, that's the section of this presidential sorry um, plenary building it is one floor and the mezzanine that should accommodate about 2000 people this is the presidential this is the vip um, area or the block which is in the shape of kalabash and the most um, uh, attractive building i would say in terms of the way it has come out to be and and the seating is circular here so the first row is been designed at the seating for presidents and the subsequent two seating arrangements is for 
for the supporting uh, people for them. And again, it has its own toilets, it has its own little pantries and waiting areas and lobbies, etc. So it's only for the VIP functions that will happen. So that's the Kalabash and then That's the banquet, multi-purpose banquet block uh, with a seating capacity of about 500 people. Now, exteriors. Now, we have defined, we know where the design um, inspiration has come from. Now, it comes to the materials. The materials, the colors and textures have to sit. I mean, you definitely have to merge with it, um, with the surroundings. It cannot be a standalone because that would be too flashy to the eyes. And we were not making a mark of making a building only for the sake of standing alone. So we have very beautifully used each and every small detail of their culture, of their day-to-day -day life, and we have and we are very beautifully able to place them there. So the colors, again, you know, we have used GRC, was used extensively. Local, um, we, we propose to use a local mud here, uh, but, but it, again, it didn't happen in the later stage. And then that's the statue of um, Mahatma Gandhi. And then we have used um, GRC jalis. These are aluminum jalis. These were steel steel baobab trees that we have used. Mostly, it is uh, uh, it's a structural structural uh, aluminum that we have used. There you go. So these baobab trees that you see, it surrounds all the three buildings like that. And, and across across is the mosque uh, elements that we, because people connect with the mosque, uh, that particular mosque that I've uh, spoken about. So we wanted to translate that language. So every bit uh, we were able to use, we have used this particular uh, design inference. Well, now we have done due diligence. We have gone to the concepts. Again, behind the scenes, there were a lot of coordination meetings because this particular um, concept drawings that you are seeing here uh, on the slides was presented to uh, the president of Niger even before we got the project. Like, you have to bid to get the tender, isn't it? So he loved the concept of the local uh, inferences, and he was very touched with what um, Stoop have demonstrated to them in terms of design intent. So there was not much that you could change as you would go in, in the in the design in in the construction phase because every little element you have seen was very touchy to the president of Niger. So when when such high profile people get involved in in projects like this, then there's not much you want to change in that. So again, we we tried our best not to tweak a turn a uh, lot of things here, but I'll I'll take you through how how the progress has happened. There you go. That's Shapurji Palanji in action. So the design was done and, and the foundation works have started. And, and here, if you see, there were existing buildings, etc. In the earlier first or second slides, we have seen um, there were a few existing buildings there on the site. The works have started. There you go. This is the, preside uh, the presidential block coming into shape. That's the Kalabash. That's the plenary block auditorium coming into action site. This is the spinal force of any construction, the labors and the safety, the project managers, country managers, every single person who has stepped onto the, onto the site has so much to contribute. And here's the banquet. These are the frames, steel frames for the roof truss of the presidential building. These are the trusses for the plenary building. This is the precast seating again. This is an action. This is design in action. There you go. That's the Kalabash with the salt pan pattern as the second skin of facade completed. The colors are taking shape here, the local colors. This is the connection between the buildings, you know, that's the bridge coming in. The marking here for this is the Gandhi statue with this. Of course, we have changed um, 
or we have div uh, deviated from the concept of using uh, yellow, uh, sorry, uh, pardon me, orange and white and green as a flag because the maintenance part of it was that, uh, you know, we thought about that later and that was not really working. So we made an, um, a different pattern here and then the tweaking of landscape, there you go, has happened. That's the salt pan, Kalabash, local references, Kalabash, salt pan pattern, Thorag signs on the reception. This is, again, we have got inside the interiors and this is the reception table. And you see in the background, you can see the Thorag and the local tribal signs being reflected. There you go, we, have, we were talking about the baobab tree in steel, which has come into picture here. That's the president of Niger who has inaugurated, who used to come, he has taken this project so personally that he has come for a couple of visits. That's the minister uh, who has helped us to get this project, the local um, representative of the president of, of Niger. Interiors taking shape, the sun pattern coming, opening up slowly. The architectural, sorry, the um, interiors of plenary block coming into picture. That's the galleries, the connection between buildings coming into shape. And that's the completion photograph of various components. These are baobabs. These are mashrabiyas with different tribal patterns on them, baobab trees. And this is the tower in the night. It shows up the flag colors of India and Niger. So uh, it shows about green, white, and orange. Interiors as built, this is not a rendering. This is project that we have executed. Again, these are interiors. Look at the colors we have picked up from the color uh, palette that we have shown in the concept. That's the banquet, that's the connection um, area between two blocks. That's the interiors. Now, when I show about interiors very quickly, um, it's not just placing the chairs here, you know, or the tables here. That has gone through a lot, lot of research again on, on what the symbols would be on this. What is the local inference on this, on the, on the, on the research in terms of interiors, all that. Look at that, one example. This is the banquet hall, first photograph here. This is the carpet, right? And if you go back to, if you just go back to a few slides, I've shown you the ladies wearing, you know, the, um, the fabric. That's where the carpet, that's what we have translated here into the carpet. So that research has become a carpet design of this project. The th this is the ceiling of that project with different tribal patterns. So when you look at that, the uh, one of the corridors or, or the connection uh, areas, and if you would see that the ceiling, and this is the detail of that ceiling. Now, this is the importance of how a local research, uh, you know, has to be incorporated from concept in towards the completion. So that, that will connect you. So when I'm traveling from India to here or Dubai to here, I definitely know I'm not in India. So that's how the region connects and that's architecture all about, isn't it? That different uh, buildings, different feel, different colors. Now that's us. Now all this, this is the reception desk I've shown you as an example, I've just placed this. It's not that you buy something and you place it. No, you have to have the vendor coordination meetings. This is in one of the, we have sourced all our furniture from Turkey. So this is in their factory. So we open up all the interior design layouts here. That's us, that's the representative from, from the client side. These are the manufacturers here. And all of us are discussing as to, after seeing a mock-up, there, there's always a mock-up done for, so there's a, there's a auditorium for 200 seating. So nobody manufactures 2,000 at a single go. There has to be an approval process because if one goes wrong, 2,000 goes wrong. So very carefully, all the layouts there. So these are action, everything like this. This is behind the scene. So while this, 
there is a site team is putting their endless amount of work in executing or the hours day and night they are putting their effort so there are different team so in this project the interior and the vendor coordination for for the interiors that that's me uh, with with the team here so which color suits well is it copper or is it gold so all these things you know uh, this this happens in in project it's meticulous detail so there is a ffne or or the um, a furniture schedule that's prepared so this is one from the project that i have placed for the samples now this is the auditorium chair this is the presidential chair this is a chair for media center this is the auditorium chair right so all of these one of each has to be inspected first in some other part of the world which is nowhere connected to africa and somebody really has to so this is the importance of drawings and tolerance at site measurements could be different um in drawings measurements could be different so you have to coordinate with the site team very extensively and and see if all these even fit the design you know there's always scope of something not going right at site when we deliver so each of these chairs and tables and all of these uh, interior items will go for a factory check first and once the representative approves this then the vendor would manufacture it so there you go that's the minister who came down to turkey himself uh and he wanted to understand what sort of furniture you see this this particular table it is section of one table which is getting in the round um seating setup for the presidents that we have just discussed that's a part of it so we have just we are just inspecting there and the representative sits on the chair this is a presidential chair very important so he's the person it is for the presidents of 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 50 odd countries of uh, african continent so this cannot go wrong so we have representative from the consultant side stoop and us so all of us have to go and uh, approve all this even before it's it comes to site this is executed again baobab tree with the mushrobias with the tribal pattern this is the entrance i have shown you earlier in the design which was marked or highlighted in red if you could remember the earlier stars, slides this is a bit of it that's the thorax sign here one of the tribes one of the five tribes again this is the pattern so if you see guys it's it's talking every research every slide that i've shown you is talking to the building you can see a flare of it in each and every slide i'm showing and this is not computer generated these are actual site photographs the detail of the dais when somebody wants to address look this is the detail country in the continent is shown here this is the final building that we have handed over of course the landscaping works is still pending but uh, it will take time the grass and everything uh, has been sowed here it will take time for them to grow etc so again uh, we realized having the flag pattern is not a practical uh, design because it requires a lot of maintenance in an in a country like africa maybe we maybe might not do justice in uh, in the maintenance of that so that's the handed over project and has been uh, inaugurated by the president his highness himself with uh, his mr jay shankar minister of uh, foreign affairs india so that's the indian and niger collaboration that has happened and that's the success story of this particular project that we have delivered so this has happened design and build in 13 13 months i mean even now people don't believe that we have um, and and since this was uh, a indian and niger uh, tie up 70% of the material was brought from india that you see in finishing of this project so that had to be the clause of the project and 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 that's the md ceo of uh, shapurji palanji he is being given the highest uh, the highest honor for finishing this project and that makes us as company and us as indians extremely proud of uh, of handing over this building in time and with world class finishes and i would like to take you we are left with about 3 or 4 minutes i have a 3 minute video if you would want to see that's the handover it's no graphics it's as is built um a video of this project just bear with me for a second here
Hello? Yeah, you can stop share, madam. Okay. And close your camera and switch on the camera in uh, team. You have camera, no, in your uh, desktop. Yeah, one second. Just close that. Is it fine? Ah, switch on the camera in the team. Yeah, fine. Thank you, architect. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. And um, I just want to, before we finish, I just want to very respectfully spend a few minutes to uh, to explain how the construction, I was not, since due to the time uh, limitations, I was not able to emphasize greatly on the um, construction challenges that we have faced. It was extremely challenging, I, as I would say, because just um, the, the, the entire team in Africa, first of all, it's not our country or continent. Uh, and and the, the climate, the people, the language is, is not ours. People are different. The understanding levels are different. The productivity is different. It was a great challenge for, for our team entirely. The entire credit goes to the management of the team there who has pulled this particular project off. It, it was Indian, ma most of the Indian uh, uh, manpower who has executed this with the support of Niger government and the local uh, manpower as well. And the material procurement was not easy everything had to come from furniture coming from turkey the design is happening in in bombay it's been coordinated and processed from dubai and and having seen as a, as a design manager having seen both the construction and the design part of it it has been an extreme pleasure and and a humble gratitude towards both the designers and the construction team who has built this project and um, I, I it's it's a it's a completely different ball game i would not even want to start how we have finished this project in terms of construction we could definitely have a different session any any time in the future uh, so that brings me to a great experience of this project uh, as an architect and a design manager from both the design side and the project management side, which has been my education, uh, both in bachelor's and master's. So thank you very much again, uh, uh, Principal Shashank and Manju ma'am for giving me this opportunity and I'm open for any question and answers that you would have. Thank you, architect Fujago, for enlightening us by sharing your journey in making of this project from the concept to completion stage. I hope uh, the session is very much useful for everyone. Uh, now we can move on to the question and answer session. I request the participant to kindly use. I request the participant can kindly use raise your hand option available. We call out your name at the time you can unmute yourself and ask a question. The participant can use raise your hand option available here to ask your question. No questions. Nobody is raising hand. Any question from the participant side? Yeah, I'm getting uh, side ago. You can unmute yourself. Yes. I'm sharing the screen, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. It was a very useful session, and uh, we students loved it. Uh, my question is on deriving the concept, regarding the concept you derived. Uh, considering uh, the concept derivation scope from a larger perspective, like a country, you you had various uh, aspects to think on, like the texture, the pattern, the form. Uh, so in a larger scale, you had a, a larger picture of the um, kind of concept you are deriving. When we are designing in a smaller scale, what all uh, minor aspects could be considered for deriving a pattern or a texture or a form? Right. 
Thanks, thanks, Raghav, for your question. Um, that's actually a very interesting question that you have asked. I'll tell you why. Because not every time you, uh, an architect basically, or the contractors are given such a huge land to, to say, do what you want. It doesn't happen like that because we are, we are bounded by the uh, bylaws space constraints, et cetera, et cetera, that you can think of any, any modern city. Now, coming to how would you want to derive uh, in, in the smaller context, in a smaller project. Now, I would say, I would say, look at the screens. Do not, first of all, you have to be very wise as, as architects to design, make it, make it feel like where they are. The sense of belonging is important. Now, when you're making when you're making, um, uh, it again depends on for whom are you designing. First thing, for whom are you designing? For what are you designing? And and how much time do you have? Again, every every single time you'll have budget as a constraint. Now, how can you translate? You have to read the streetscapes. When when you have a larger angle, you go on a countryscape. When you come uh, towards, when when your horizon becomes narrower, then then what you have is left to cityscapes and streetscapes. So I, again, this is a personal opinion. Um, there, are, there are always different opinions when it comes to design. My personal opinion is do not design in a, in a fairy tale uh, manner because you always, your design has to be practical. It is, it again has to be street, uh, streetscapes are important when it comes to the external architecture and the internal, I believe, when you talk about the interior spaces, which is the detail, more further detail part of it, you have to see what is the purpose and what is the mindset required to perform that particular purpose of the building that you're designing. For example, if that's a school or a college or an academic building, then you would definitely want to, you would definitely want to, you know, take inferences only to suit, suit the calm, uh, um, you know, interiors for, for an academic background. So you would only choose colors and textures, again, connecting the psychological requirement and how would people behave in using what colors and what patterns? Because sometimes the darker colors, I believe, uh, again, I'm getting more into interiors because we are talking about the smaller versions of spaces here. Because in a smaller version of spaces, there's rarely, I always in the, in today's, uh, uh, you know, if you cannot be very, very different from what you do, again, you'll get a glass box. That's all. You're restricted. No matter how beautiful you want to make it look on the paper, if the reality hits at some point in time, you won't be allowed to do whatever. I'm right now in Dubai. All I see is glass boxes. That's all. What's mattering here is the interiors. So when I walk into a restaurant, it shows about which restaurant I walked into. So the local content of what the for what purpose, if it's a Thai restaurant, you can see the entire Thailand in the interiors, although I'm in Dubai, right? So I know that I'm in a Thai restaurant with the Thai interiors, like we have used carpets in our uh, uh, project. So I think it's sense of activity and the sense of um, the, the psychological impact that you would want to create for that particular function. For restaurants, I just gave a Thai example, a Chinese example, a Chinese restaurant. So that's where you will have to play with their culture in that atmosphere, you know? So inferencing, it's again the psychology. Then people know that you're in a Chinese restaurant. So if you have an Indian uh, or an African context, then you're serving a Chinese thing, maybe they might not. There'll be conflict of design, the atmosphere, and, and the intent, I would say. So again, it's more psychological, and what that particular space is requiring in, in terms of what purpose is that space used for. I hope it answers, but uh, it's, it's again a lengthy topic, so... Uh, I just tried to encapsulate that in a few sentences here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It was so useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Raga. Thank you, Sai Raga. The next person is Ms. Sita Ramalakshmi. You can unmute your mic. Yeah. Hi, Pooja. Are hi, you able hi, to hear hi, me? Sita. Yes, I can, Sita. How are yeah. you? Good? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, yeah, I, 
my question to you is like uh, like culture was the primary aspect that was highlighted in developing your design concept so i want to know what are the other parameters that were considered while uh, developing the concept like uh, what about the climate the material uh, how did you actually uh, like try to um, relate those aspects into your design right one is the culture yes you're correct uh, that was a significant of our design because again it's a collaboration as i've mentioned it's a collaboration between india and niger and and africans are very dear to their culture now how did we translate others the climate there uh, is is again in one of those slides i've said it's very closer to the to the sahara uh, to the sahara desert now in in the earlier slides if you have noticed these three were independent buildings right mm -hmm. these three were independent buildings and there was no connection i mean i don't know if there's any way i can go back to that but um, in the earlier concepts uh, when in the concept and the finished product if you see them uh, side by side uh, from there's a connection between um, there was only a open staircase between the presidential and media block you're walking towards the plenary it was open now that's where your climatic condition come into picture in concept on papers it was looking good but when when there is a dust storm mm. it is it is you can't maintain that there will be there will be feet and inches of sand deposit on anything that is open there so what we have done is later in the design development although the concept was approved we had to increase our budget uh, to redesign redesign to get the climatic condition uh, in uh, into picture and see that none of the dust during the dust storm all these buildings should be interconnected and the facade should take care of um, of the sand not getting inside the premises you know and then later we have connected the climate uh, due to the climatic uh, requirement and it was demanding that we really can't have open spaces in this design because of the of the desert sand getting onto it so that was taken into consideration and then we have redesigned to accommodate that so all the open ends tying these three fluid spaces were all connected in uh, we closed we there was there was no roof to it it was only staircases just connecting and they were like semi open or open areas then that's when we had to connect all of us to bear in mind the climatic uh, adversities uh, that that happened there so thank you thank you so much welcome yeah thank you ms eta the next person uh, mr uh, sharayu davani you can unmute yourself sir uh, yes uh, good afternoon ma'am hi hi ma'am um uh, i'm an architecture student uh, pursuing architecture in third year and yeah. i wanted to ask that uh, sometimes it is not possible to replicate the things or objects in our design right so uh, how can we incorporate uh, the as it is object or the things in our design or ca how can we use them i mean okay. as okay. as you have incorporated the uh, tree and the uh, salt uh, salt I mean, pan yeah. yeah salt pans in design so what is the another way we can use it see i think i think um, architecture fine uh, in in the in the modern in the modern setup where we are not able to take direct inferences from uh, from the surroundings i think the smaller elements wherever you can use in terms of minor details that could be staircases there could be uh, windows there could be doors in terms of architraves this is this is again it's all coming down to interiors and the connecting areas because there are this is what this is what we usually do when when there is no scope of incorporating anything because this is an african client but but uh, on a on a uh, regular basis this is one of case where we were we were given a free hand to do whatever we want to again you know that's why i picked up picked this up as a case study project but it doesn't happen every time and in that case we use uh, the colors right okay, the colors of the building 
the materials, the tiles, the stones, the marble, uh, anything that we have to do, the wood, yeah, the architraves, then then the, then staircases, railings, corner edge details. These are the fine elements um, that we take inferences from from the from the surround. Now, for example, uh, in in uh, for example in Dubai, if you see. There are camels. I mean, what 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 reminds you of Dubai is you know grand grandness. You know, yes. or more vernacular part of it is sand and camels. That's the that's the other part, the vernacular part of of a place like Dubai, and and the and the most other side of Dubai is flashy, right? So yeah. for you, so there are two different, uh, completely opposite uh, images that people would have in mind when you say it's Dubai. So if they are outdoor spaces, right? So if they're yeah. outdoor spaces, we get used deserts and camels, that, that kind of Dubai context in picture. So if you, if you could Google souk, S-O-U-Q, souk are like bazaars. So that kind of elements are used in the exterior part of it where people can see. Where people who are just driving down the street who cannot see uh, your exterior, it will be a glass box. Then what matters is internal. Internal, we make them um, use of gold color. Dubai is known for gold. So flashy colors, like that's, that's, that's the regional context here. So we use a lot of gold in design, a lot of beige color in design to keep it uh, very closer to the sand color, you know. So that's. Yeah. That's a lot of finish. If you're walking into the lobbies, they're mostly into brown, keeping very closer to what a desert thing, neutrals, a lot of neutrals. And again, every accessory that you see, like switchboards or anything, you know, if Dubai, you talk about it's in gold color or a bronze color, you know, just to make it feel flashy. So again, as I would say, use in the finer details. If you're not able to use the direct way of using, then use it in the finer details. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Charayo Davani. Is there any other question? Hemalata, I can see Hemalata. <laughs> I don't know, I can see some hands. No, it's my name. No, it's your name. Ah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. One, one person from Manaspita. She do what I am, no? Any question from the participants? Oh, there was someone, Manaswita. Hmm? She lowered her hand, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, meantime, I, I have a question uh, regarding the scene. Uh, can you hear me? I yes, can, sir. I can, sir. Yeah. yeah. So that was a nice presentation, and we could uh, get to know about the country. Uh, from Africa and then what are the cultural uh, things about that. Uh, the question is like, since it was a time-bound project, uh, what was the technology that was adopted for the, the construction? Uh, whether it was precast, prefabricated kind of thing or all in situ kind of work that happened there? Right. Thank you, sir, uh, for that question. Now, that's, again, a right point that you have uh, uh, pointed out. Because initially, when we designed, it was all designed in precast. Especially, especially the auditorium and the plenary block, it was designed in precast. But again, we couldn't wait for the precast design uh, to, because everything, there were no, in the local surroundings, there was no big vendor who could manufacture the precast elements for us. So that means, again, adding on to the logistics and the transport uh, point of it. So what we have done is in the, in the, in the detailed design and the schematics, it was always precast, but in the detailed design, uh, when we came to that, since we couldn't have anybody, um, who would, who would do the precast elements in the nearby surroundings because these were quite big buildings and we wanted a, a big player. So we did investigate, but um, the timing, the timelines were not really fitting into our program. So what we done is instead of waiting and trying to make programs, what we have done is uh, the, the roof, it was always in steel. So, 
so the walls, uh, we, we said half of it will be cast in situ and then in precast. So there was uh, some, some buildings wherever we could do cast in situ, like for the presidential building, it was cast in situ. Uh, the auditorium, the seating, etc., was all precast. So there was a mixed technology used for, for, uh, for these buildings. So, so the seating capacity for the 2001 auditorium that we spoke, that was precast. And then the other one was cast in situ. So it is a mixed technology. Uh, and the roof was done in steel structure. It was done in India. The entire fabrication, the, the, the steel drawing, everything was done in India. And then we have uh, hired a military jumbo plane to lift all this and then... Uh, um, you know, and lift all the material and then do the execution at site. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you principal, sir. Uh, the next uh, person is from our uh, Midas faculty, Mr. Vigneshwaran. You can unmute yourself and ask your question, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Hi, hi Pooja. It's, it's a very interesting presentation from concept to completion. Uh, I would like to know the cost of the project and uh, did you do any compromise while designing because of the cost or budget of the project? Because whenever we do a large scale project, the budget will will be the most constrained for us to uh, freely go with the concepts or uh, design or technique. So I would like to know how did you manage in this project? Hello. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vignation. Uh, yeah. Interesting question. That's where that's where we come into picture. We as design managers, because we um, our role is to control. Um, there is a contract that you sign, and sometimes what happens is, uh, as I as I mentioned, that uh, the concept drawing that photograph was already sold in terms of an idea to the president. So there was nothing much because every little uh, every little point. Uh, in that, in that um, uh, architectural uh, uh, graphics that we have created, we couldn't change anything because tampering that is tampering sentiments of the president and then his people. So again, really, if you see the, for example, one could, one one small example, the area again is somewhere around. Again, um, it's not exact, but I'm telling you the range of it. It's a, it was about eighteen thousand square meters in terms of the build up and the cost of the project was about again plus or minus about 55 million dollars so that was that was the scale of the project and um, did i have to compromise yes um, with a, with a very a very heavy heart being an architect i love the concept what uh, our consultants have created for us i love the idea but Again, on the contracting, on the build side, design and build is a turnkey um, uh, you would always talk about. Design side, it was fabulous. But when coming to build, it was exceeding our uh, the budgets, that internal budgets that we had for different elements. For So we had value engineered. Something that you would hear a lot in a design and build setup is value engineering the pro, uh, the design or the or the materials now that's where i have personally chopped off a lot of barbed -bar trees that were coming in the okay. periphery of the building yes because each of those barbed -bar tree again roughly was costing us about 10000 to i think 15000 i don't know if it was 15000 or some odd thousand dollars like that so every chop of that one barber tree gave me that much amount to use it somewhere else. And really, since I've said that was not adding any structural uh, support to the to the to the building, it was a purely design element just to see. Now spending that much for for somebody who is looking at the building just for a few minutes, you know, is it worth it? Yeah. Is it worth it? Is, was the next question. And each of those costed me, you can, you can multiply by how many ever number. So it was 30 odd number or 28. I, I don't know how much it was because it's quite some time we have worked on last year on this. But uh, we have reduced that number to from X amount to X minus 15, you know? So that's one element. 
Now, interiors, all the specifications, they spoke about using teal, the mushrubias, uh, they said, the baobab trees, they said, the specification from the, from the architect was, uh, was using teal. It's expensive, very expensive. And, and when there is a design and build contract, you would really want to play your cards very well. You wouldn't want to spend in, in, um, in, a, in an architectural element that much in a, in a practical world, really. So again, we have changed from steel to powder coated aluminum. All the handrails in the project were in stainless steel. We have changed all of them into, into powder coated aluminum. So that saves, that saves about a lot of percent from the original specifications, you know, without, so, so which means, I mean, we don't tamper with the, with the intent of that, you know, but um, for example, in the interiors, there were about 2000 lights specified on the ceiling at the one entrance. I'm, and I'm like, not required. 2000 lights at one entry, not required. Had it been Dubai, had it been Mumbai, fine. But in Africa, maintaining each of those will be very, very difficult. So let us reduce. Instead of 2,000 lights in, in X square meters of area, let us give X minus 200, X minus 300 numbers, you know? So so like that, we have done every inch, every bits and piece of, of that, uh, you know? We have, we have carefully value engineered a lot of, these are just a couple of items that I'm talking about. There's a lot of other items that we have value engineered. Yeah, I understood. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, architect Vipnesh and so. Is there any other question from the participant? Yeah. I think no more questions. Uh, thank you, architect Bujakot, for being patient enough to answer all the questions from the participant. Now I request our HOD Midas, Professor Justin, to deliver the vote of thanks. Over to Justin, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, uh, thank you, Architect Pooja Gaur. Like uh, that was an absolute presentation. I personally loved that, and I hope uh, all our students would have loved it very much because uh, it was more than a teacher taking up to a class. So uh, I we generally have this. Uh, a problem of uh, professionals uh, stepping down to this level and explaining the concepts because they'll be very talking very superficially thinking that the people will understand that but your presentation was actually very uh, meticulously done and uh, i think uh, the smallest detail also was explained thanks for being so uh, patient in explaining that also so i think uh, uh, that was that should have been a very useful session for our students as well and I think uh, that was a good participation from the students and uh, even professionals away from our college because uh, in the question answer session, actually only two of the questions are from our college. <laughs> so, okay. uh, <laughs> so we were not, never introduced to the other people there. So I think uh, we are actually doing that kind of service and uh, thanks for being a part of that also. I think uh, knowledge has to be disseminated and uh, thanks for your time here uh, on behalf of the staff and the faculty and uh, the students of medas i uh, thank you uh, it's a formal thanks and uh, uh, thanks for the participants also for being very patient in listening and uh, making this a successful story uh, thanks for the organizers uh, the moderator and uh, organizers who are uh, taking the meticulous efforts for the past one week at least and I was very, I'm very thankful to Mr. ma'am, and uh, because uh, uh, for bringing such a valuable resource to our college. So uh, it was a very nice, uh, successful uh, evening for us. Uh, thanks, architect uh, for making this uh, uh, successful event for us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mr. Justin, for spending time listening to me carefully. I mean, I reciprocate all the thanks that uh, of, I have seen about 140 participants odd when I last look at the number of participants, which is great. I never thought that I'll be talking to so many virtual participants, which was a great experience. Um, again, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shashank, for giving me this uh, opportunity. Manju, ma'am. 
thank you very much that was so quick and so and I, i'm glad i'm able to meet your expectations in terms of in terms of what you were looking into uh, as a webinar i hope i have satisfied uh, every all the audiences here so thank you and thanks for your time guys thank you very much thank, thank you thank you pooja yeah thank you all the it staff who has helped and tried to connect thank you yeah, so yeah. much yeah yeah thank you thank you thanks thank you ma'am thank you all for the participation i request the participant to kindly fill the feedback form and have two important announcement regarding our upcoming webinar the international webinar by professor ruth de prince rescheduled on thursday 23rd july 2020 between 3 to 4:30 pm as part of midas webinar series webinar 13 focused on new trends in workplace interiors by architect satya madhavan I welcome you all for the upcoming webinars. Once again, 